What is a process group? Why do we have process groups? Why are they called so? What's the relationship between different process groups? You might know answers to all these questions, but do you know how process groups are related to knowledge areas? Let's figure it out. Hey, this is Praveen Malik from pmbypm.com, your ultimate resource for the PMP exam prep. I have made it my mission to help you pass the PMP exam in your first try. Today, I'm going to talk about process groups and knowledge areas and everything you wanted to know about them. Stay tuned till the end of this video and I'll share a mnemonic with you, which will help you in remembering these five process groups. Before you go ahead, please subscribe to this channel and click on bell icon. This way, whenever I release a new informative video, you'll get an instant notification. Hey, do you remember our example project from the knowledge areas video? If you might not, if you don't, you can click on the card above. Our project was to go on a vacation with a big family. For our vacation project, we'll do many activities. These activities can be categorized under five heads or five groups. These groups are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. For example, initiating might include decision to go on a vacation, decision for the place. The planning might include planning for time, cost, scope, etc. Executing might include actually going on the vacation, doing some sightseeing, etc. Monitoring and controlling activities would include taking care of the issues as they come. Finally, closing activities would include coming back with fond memories and printing some albums. So you saw five different types of activities. These are clubbed into five different process groups. Why are they called process groups? To understand that, let's understand what is a process first. A process is a set of activities or actions that culminates into a result. According to many standards, a process starts with some inputs, some tools or techniques are employed on these inputs, and then some outputs are produced. Similarly, in the PMBOK guide, we have inputs, tools and techniques, and outputs. So there are many processes in the PMBOK guide, and all these processes are clubbed together into five different heads. These five different heads are called five process groups of project management. These are the five process groups of project management, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. Under each process group, there are many processes. There are two processes initiating, 24 in planning, executing has 10 processes, monitoring and controlling has 12 processes, closing has only one process. So is there a relationship between a process group and knowledge area? Yes, there is. A process belongs to one process group. Similarly, a process belongs to one knowledge area. So there are a total of five process groups. All the 49 processes are divided into five process groups. Similarly, all the 49 processes are divided into 10 knowledge areas. For example, let's consider two processes. Number one, collect requirements. Collect requirements is collection, gathering of requirements and documenting what do we have to do in the project. It's part of planning because we are planning something. We are thinking about future. Okay, these are the things that we have to do. It's also part of scope management because requirements belong to scope. Number two, control quality. Control quality is part of monitoring and controlling process group because we are testing something, inspecting something, finding out the issues, finding out the defects. We are checking. Similarly, control quality belongs to the quality management knowledge area because we are actually controlling or monitoring the quality of a project. So you saw for, from these two examples, each process belongs to one process group and one knowledge area. Let's look at initiating activities or initiating process group. Initiating involves kicking off something, formally starting something, authorizing a project, announcing it to the world that we are starting the project. But above all, assigning a project manager is the major part of initiating activities. Planning activities. We ask ourselves some questions like, what do we do? How to do these things? When do we do these things? 
who will do these things and how to measure when we answer these questions we have our plan ready executing activities executing activities include actual project tasks ongoing work implementing something creating some deliverables internal deliverables or external deliverables for the client producing some outputs monitoring and controlling activities it means measuring something taking corrective actions making changes taking care of the deviations checking the performance of the project etc finally the closing activity just like initiating activities we have formal closing activities which includes documenting everything handing over to the client making final reports etc so what's the relationship between different process groups this diagram explains the relationship so we start with initiating activities but quickly jump on to the planning activities for example while we are holding a kickoff meeting at the same time we start thinking about the plan okay how much budget how much time for the project and as soon as we start thinking about planning we also start executing so we employ some resources and they start doing some preliminary activities so it's a like a cycle we plan something execute something we plan plan some more execute some more so what happens is in a project when we initiate the planning activities are started almost simultaneously so does the executing activities and this planning and executing cycle goes on and on and on till we know that the project is finished and then we start with the closing activities the closing activities means handing over something to the client the final result now the final part of the closing happens along with some planning and some executing so where does the monitoring and controlling comes in monitoring and controlling is big daddy it will monitor and control initiating planning executing and closing activities for example the monitoring and controlling will check if the plan was proper or not if the work produced was proper or not are we on schedule or not are we performing as per the budget or not if there is something wrong then we might go back and replan or reexecute so this cycle goes on okay so now for the mnemonic i promised at the beginning of this video imagine pmp exam as mini piece of cake what does this mean i means imagine and i also means initiating p means pmp and p also means planning so if you remember this small phrase imagine pmp exam as mini piece of cake you will be able to remember the five process groups thank you for watching this video you can follow me on other social media channels like linkedin quora and facebook you can find the links to these in the description below before you go please like this video share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel thank you once again